there was a lot of action on the bar and I had lost over the previous couple of days, I think that I had lost maybe three or four Chinook. Second lost fish today. It takes talent to lose fish that effectively. Not everybody can do it. I'll show you guys again. I think it's gone, man. But not many more times, okay? Because I'm getting impatient, but you guys not, like, look at this. Clearly you don't know how to lose a fish here. That's the evidence. And the people that I was with being of questionable moral character always used that as a way to laugh at me. It seemed like the only one who couldn't get a fish to shore was Jeff. And Rod and I both landed some nice Chinook. And it was awesome. And we were celebrating and making sure, uh, being the good friends that we are, to rub it in Jeff's face as much as we could that he was and, and just make him very aware of the fact that he was the only one who had not yet got a shore, uh, fish to shore. So they'd taken fish. Oh, Jeff posed for this picture beside us with our big fish and you with nothing. And I was good humored about it, but you know, you always know that you're kind of the butt of the joke and you don't, it's not a comfortable place to be. Uh, you know, it's kind of your responsibility as friends is to make sure that, that if someone's doing an inadequate job, that they are very well aware of it. And so we did that. Um, came back full circle the whole around and bit us right in the ass, because in the end, he ended up landing a fish that was easily two to three times the size of anything that we had touched. He hooked into a monster, oh, well over, I would say, if I had to fathom a guess, over 50 pounds. And I've never seen a rod take a hit like that. The strike was absolutely phenomenal. I thought the rod was gonna break. I know you hear it all the time, but I really thought that that rod was gonna break before I could get to the rod holder. It honestly, no word of a lie, it looked like there was so much tension on the rod that it was gonna blow into a thousand different pieces. And uh, I thought that I had the tension set too, too tight, basically, but I didn't. When I got over there, I set the hook, and you can tell right away. When, when you get a fish, when you get a hit when you're bar fishing, there's an excitement on the riverbank, there's uh, everybody starts cheering and you get people telling you, oh, you know, keep your tip up. But when so something like, like that happens, it brings a different feeling on. Like there's a, the only word I can, I can think of is there's a catharsis of emotion. People kind of go silent when, when they see that. It's, it's a different story and everybody knows it. So when I had this fish on, I was thinking, man, I just can't lose this. It's gotta be huge. And I carried that anxiety with me basically throughout the whole fight. Uh, there was a spot down further where there was a log that if the fish had have run into it would have almost certainly broken off and gotten away. So I worked my way down around that oh, it's log off. and got into no, it's some not. further open bar where there was room to fight the fish. And by then a few people had, uh, had gathered around and I, I was having real trouble imposing my will on this fish, for lack of a better word. I mean, it was it was powerful. There was a boat full of strangers watching this all sort of take place. And after about 40 minutes, Jeff was at a stalemate with this fish. And there was nothing he could do. He was just sitting there pulling against dead weight. The thing was holding out in the middle of the river and he could not move it. Uh, the boat recognized it, they came down. They said, hop in. So me, Jeff and, and Ian hopped in the boat. I started to reel the fish in and there's a lot of second guessing that happens. And if you fish lots, you'll see that arguments often break out at this stage. How do you net it? Net it, under, net it under its head, net it under the body, come up from behind, you're gonna lose it, that kind of thing. You can see a lot of tension. And I felt it. But then, as, I, as the fish broke the surface, I thought, you know, I can buy fish. Like, there's lots of fish in the supermarket. What am I here for? Am I here for this filet that's gonna go on my barbecue? I've got total strangers helping me out with their boat. I've got a, I'm surrounded by good friends. I'm drifting down the river, surrounded by spectacular scenery. That's what I'm there for. That's the whole thing, that's what it's about. So at that point I said to Quinn, you know what, any way you wanna handle this fish, you go right ahead. If it's gone, it's gone, that's fine. We've already accomplished what we came here for. What happens next is, is meaningless, and I really felt that way. When Jeff brought it up enough that we could see this, the, um, the caudal peduncle, which is the fish's 
uh, the base of its tail was, you could tell that it was a massive fish. It was longer than I can reach. Seeing that fish break the surface sends a, 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 a spike of peer, fear and panic right into your heart. Like you can feel the jolt in your heart because you literally, you do not know what is going to happen next. It's kind of, kind of just like, I don't know. There's a 50-50 chance that you are going to get this thing in the boat. And I just totally relaxed and we pulled the fish up and Quinn got his net underneath there. So he brought it up. I went down with the net the first time and I did not think that this thing was gonna fit in the net and it thrashed. I thought it was gone, but uh, you know, we got a second crack at it. started flopping around, the triangle weight came around, it smoked me in the back of the head, I had a goose egg, bleeding, but we got this fish in the boat, and by this point, I know there's a lot of, a lot of, you know, conservative measures and conservatively minded people out there who say you gotta release the big ones and you gotta release the big ones because we've been targeting them for so long as trophy fish, and I do agree with that statement, but when you put a fish like this under the amount of stress that we put it under, we got it in the boat, you could see its belly was all pink and red from burst blood vessels. The thing was under tremendous stress. It was hooked really deep, there was some blood. You do not want to chance it and release a fish that you, that there's a good chance it's going to die anyways. It, it was just, it was a really great moment and I think it's, it's great that I caught the biggest fish of my career in that fashion. I think it's really fitting. I, I wouldn't change anything. So what happens when you go fishing with Captain Quinn, eh? <laughs> um, it's kind of fitting that the rod I brought with me was uh, given to me by my great uncle who had taken me on the fishing trip where I caught my first salmon and he was an avid fisherman as well. And then years later when I went and visited him, when he was, he'd, be, he'd become too sick to fish anymore, he presented me with this rod and it, uh, it sat unused for quite a few years, but it was that one that I had used on this particular trip, which I think is kind of neat. Um, 